Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm hoping that the brown bag is fairly casual, but I'm Brent Skidmore. I teach in the art and art history uh, department. That's my primary, primary duty here. And then um, lots of recent focus has been on the development of the STEAM Studio project. And in deference to not introducing everybody in the room, there are a lot of people in this room that that happens with, that's for sure. So, and then there are a lot of people not in this room that it happened with. So. I uh, will get to that at one point, but I put up this title, and as I wrote it, and felt really silly about sending it to Jean, Sarah Sanders, who's sitting on the front row, it's really our experience most every day, um, because we're more on the front line, and then other folks are in, on a different front line, so basically it seems like everyone's doing that on that, on the team, and then someone asked me, they said, um, is that Southern? And I, and I was like, or, or am I just old? That's kind of what, what came into my mind. So it was a younger person that asked me. So if anybody has any idea, but it just... I've, I've heard of it. It's in the Northeast. It's in the Northeast. Okay, so if we can get some idea where it might have came from, that's good. I won't feel so conscientious about it. Um, and then with current political times, it also, I think, brings up a total different notion, too, which is not very pleasant. So um, I put this up because many times we're asked, what is the STEAM studio? And it's because it's a long trek away. People don't know. <laughs> We're less than a mile from here, so really it's not a long trek, and I'm being facetious, but this is what we say at the front door. Right, Amy? Right? So our, our, um, our marketing and branding crew has really helped us out a lot. They've been part of the, part of the vision also. But sign technology, technology, engineering, art, math, and or making, that's my bastardization of, of the M part, uh, because I'm a maker, they come together in this space. Engaging the next generation. Really, you can go down and you read that. And I read it this morning and I thought, yeah, that describes it. Uh, but I'll show you what it is. Um, and in a way, it's not even determined what it is, right? As we met on Tuesday, the STEAM team, we meet at 5 and still don't have a beer at 5. Something's wrong with that. But um, we meet at 5 and meet on this one particular point in the week that all of us can get together. And we do. And when we do... It's a, a lively conversation about drinking really fast, uh, but not beer <laughs> from the fire hose. And then how can we put out the fires that have happened uh, throughout that time? What's on? What's coming on 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 the you know on the front? And then what can we do next to make sure we can sustain this effort and drink? All right. So, but my intersection is at the A part, and uh, some would say. You're, let's see, so anything that A would stand for that stands for the guy who gets pushed to the front to speak in front of public crowds, I don't know what that could be. Um, <laughs> or we'll go out and raise money for, for this awesome uh, endeavor. So I get pushed to the front sometimes. But it all kind of began right here, I think. It all began with a team of people. Those include a team of people that I'm not going to list because it's very long. But they're people in computer science. Rebecca Bruce sitting in the front, Mechatronics, Susan Reeser, uh, Jackson Martin, Matt West, students that are in the room, Shanna, um, and who am I leaving out? Myself, and I'm leaving out somebody key on our, on our team. Who is it? Yeah, Sarah. <laughs> who I work with the most of all. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a story of our lives right now. Who did I forget today? And she goes, it's me. Who did, who did you forget today? Oh, me. So this morning it was like, she came in and I said, well, would a hug help? And we just started the day that way. So it started also with some people that aren't in the room. So Steve Walsh, who was the director of Mechatronics, had a dream. I've been here since 2007 trying to uh, bring something for fruition connected to this thing that was called the Craft Campus. Essentially, build better studios for sculpture students and art students. You know, that's really what that was about. So it happened that we had a really... Uh, agreeable crew. Uh, Susan asked me a question earlier, how to get to one place. I said, how to get to one place, been my experience here, is that you work with the faculty that are willing to step in and, and really get the work done. Uh, and people respond. 
But it happened with Steve. That Steve went out and raised money from the Duke Energy Foundation. Susan and Rebecca have taught this awesome class for years called Creative Fabrication, which where they bring it's a 100 level uh, engineering class that solves their diversity intensive, right? So and we and they when they were teaching that class focused around um, assistive device technologies. So similar to sculpture, right? So we all looked at each other and said, yeah, we can do this. So essentially, it's a class that comes together, or it has come together. I think we've done it three times now. And if I get any of this wrong, like forgetting Sarah, you can just let go like that, or say like that. Um, there's Matt uh, actually drawing with a computer in front of him, which is a crazy thing that happens with an art education student, an engineering student, and Matt um, West, who's sitting in the front, our technician and teacher, um, in art, another art student over there, and that's so. In this class, they team up as engineers and artists, right? So, not one thing remains more important, it seems, like of the S, T, and the E, and the A, and the M. Um, and then that was going along, right? That was the 3D lab in Rhodes Robinson. That's where Sarah and I probably met one of the times that we met in this incarnation of our. Um, knowing each other and then we ended up with some parts so what they do in this in this class is they actually design assistive technologies so all of this is going on while we're designing a studio while we're raising money actually I think I raised um, help raise and yeah 1.2 million came in during that time we were all still teaching those classes the 400,000 was on the books a little bit earlier than that then 100,000 came in you can do the math. Now we're up to 1.2. 1, 1. So all of that money, the majority of it, raised outside of house, which has been a huge effort. And it continues today, as my colleagues know, Tuesday when we're talking about another one that's coming up. So we get together, and we're doing all that inside of the, the, day, uh, the time of this class. And I put in this timeline because I had a presentation without this timeline. And then I realized how important the nexus of, of us all coming together, looking at each other, and saying we can do this because my first call was from actually it might have been from Sarah it could have been from Keith um, is to say do you want to come look at this facility with us and maybe do something with us and that's kind of the open door you know it's like Rrr. there it is like oh finally and I had talked to Steve a number of times I didn't know why I wasn't responding and then he then he went away so I was like well he's probably being kind he didn't want to tell me he was headed out so um but we had this thing open door walked into it saw a facility all that's happening right before this happens. And I was going to leave it out of the talk, but it doesn't make any sense because every time we revisit drinking from the fire hose every day and doing what we're doing, we realize that basically there's something to be realized in the curricular uh, aspect of the intersection of this place where you make things, that's essentially what it is, right, and design things, that cannot be realized if we don't continue doing this part. So we start to think about what courses can we offer that specifically are just, you know, how to use the water jet. Do you have an application for a turned wood bowl in your life? So you see how diverse those things are? One's almost, one's manual. The other one's not. The other one's CNC. Um, and then it goes without saying that each of the groups learn a lot about each other during this. Learn a lot about what their processes are, what their techniques are, any, anything about what. And, and then they also stand in, most of the time, the position I stand in when the, the computer part starts, the CNC, which I now know what it stands for, then it just like dives over my head and somebody puts their hand on me and says, it's going to be okay. You know? And then if I tell them how I can make something in wood or metal and they look at me the same way, I'm like, oh, I couldn't do that. Then we work together to make that happen. So some fantastic things have come out of this. This is a kind of the in, interior of a uh, one-handed, was that what it was? It was a one-handed rollerball uh, a keyboard. And then um, some cane handles that also I think if you unscrewed you could put some pills in top of or something like that um, and then all of these are modeled in Fusion 360 our parts of them are modeled and the parts of them some of the parts are made either out of uh, PLA and printed are and so everything's prototyped and so some things are cast in metal and that's what you were seeing right before that they're cast in metal and brought together not exactly an easy thing to do but what we find is that people get to understand things about materials and processes that they wouldn't have gotten to understand if they were in their silos. So that's a dynamic thing that's, that launched this thing. Without showing you that, it felt like, I, well, 
I was going to show you this awesome place and really couldn't tell you the history. And this is really what, this is really the foundation of it all. Am I right? I mean, even this crazy thing right here that when you actuated it, pushed the actuator, it inflated a little, those little silicone things and grabbed that cup. Sometimes it crushed the cup, I heard. You can see the students look a little worried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, and this was, you know, this part right here, uh, that's an art student, uh, new media engineer. Uh, this part right here is PLA. This is silicone, and there's a, a pump right here, which would have to, but it, so this was, a, you would be, need to be a real amputee to use this. We don't often have that opportunity, obviously. And then this, our previous semester, you worked with who, Rebecca? Um, Oh, I don't know the name of it. I worked with uh, Brooks Howell, uh, retirement community, and actually worked with people who needed particular help, and the students designed for particular So then we manifest that one, one time in an um, art and mechatronics show that we did, I think, at the end of our first time together. Maybe, yeah, first time. Um, so you can tell it's all a little bit of a blur, and guess what? It's only been... Three semesters, maybe. I think this is the, maybe the third semester, maybe. Yeah. Year and a half. Year and a half. <laughs> she says, <laughs> feels like 10. <laughs> so it feels like 10 because we're doing all of that on top of what we were doing to try to develop this facility that is very close to you. There's our running track. And it just give you some sense. You came out the back sign right here, right went underneath the highway, and we're right here. Cheap Joe's is right here. Soon to be a new Ginger's Revenge, alcoholic ginger brew. Um, and a also mock tasting room in the same place. So they're going to have mocktails and alcoholic ginger brew. And maybe no beer. Um, sorry for the beer lovers. And if you come between these buildings, we, you can enter, enter the main building right here, and we're in the suite that's in this corner. It's a big parking lot here, park all the way down here. This, at this end of the building, is going to be the North Carolina uh, Glass Center, which is a, a um, it's a footprint larger than ours. Ours is 12,000 square feet uh, that we've leased for 10 years, and theirs is somewhere over 25, I think. I don't know, maybe Matt can tell us for sure on that one. If anybody has a connection with someone who could get us a sidewalk from, uh, let's see, right here, I need a sidewalk, we need a sidewalk from here to here, that section right there, that's all. So underneath the bike, underneath the uh, overpass, or we can walk all the way down, and there's a sidewalk that ends right here, but on the exit ramp, there's no sidewalk that goes here. <coughs> so that's just another thing we're trying to get done. So it is um, in the city's plan. It is in the city's plans, the yes. For the DOT. It is currently yeah. in their future plans, but just like everything here, yeah. it is the state, and that will happen. Right. Know, but it is on their list. It yeah. Is. I was told I think that we have moved it up their hit list. We have moved it up the list. It helps when, when Mark Meadows shows up at the STEAM studio and wants to know what's going on. So, Because he says, how can I help you? And I said, I got an idea. <laughs> and he said, really? I said, oh, yeah. And when I said sidewalk, he was like, well, that's easy. Um, I think I said it was a little shorter than it really was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it, is it going now? That's the question. It's not going now, but that's, they're just waiting on us to tell them when we are ready. And we'll get to why we're waiting a little bit, just a little bit further. Um, so. Inside the space, it's interesting, I put these images in there. Uh, these are obviously from the design rendering. Uh, and this is a mezzanine that doesn't exist. Everybody knows what value engineering is, right? You worked on a university project. Um, so that means, what do you have to get rid of? <laughs> so that was a restroom in our mezzanine. You know, and a few windows and uh, doors with windows and things like that. Uh, but not a whole lot. Uh, so we haven't realized the mezzanine, but I put this in here because I don't think I ever saw these renderings and I've been this far into the project. <laughs> and we brought them back out for the ribbon cutting because we wanted people to know, like, we still need support to build a mezzanine because our computer lab's sitting on the floor now. Um, so this was, um, this was another concept to show the mezzanine too, so I'm going to show the whole shop. So we did a lot of this. This is just the wood shop. Uh, Sarah and I designed it back and forth over the course of a summer. Sometimes I know we knew more about what was being asked of the engineers, no offense, uh, but about the workings of this space, you know, and how you would move through it and what would happen in there. And oftentimes that wasn't heard. So, so we're working through some, some of those pains. Uh, but most all, it was been a, it's been a really awesome project to work on, in my opinion, because of Scott Walker. 
who's been the project manager <laughs> and would actually often, because he had so much going on, defer to us about what was at the front lines. And this was over the course of the summer. Uh, and that's uh, just basically as we're beginning there. So the building, when I went into it, when Sarah went into it, you could walk into 50,000 square feet. And I literally said the first time I went there, I'm not going in the building. He said, why? I said, because I don't want to go in that building. I, you couldn't see light at the end of the 50,000 square feet. They had covered over all of the skylights in the building. Um, so there's 80 new skylights in the building. Sometimes you can walk into the steam studio and you don't need a light turned on to work in the shop. It's quite pleasant. Uh, and then we have high efficiency lighting in there. Um, lots of chaos over the summer that we came in and checked on sent back Scott like, well, it's really not the way to say it is, you know, things like that. Or it's really awesome, I can't believe it. Um, or why, why are they building that wall the way they are around the dust extraction system? You know, just details like, oh, because if you need to move the dust extract, extraction system, you need to be able to take down the, the wall that's around it so you can bring it somewhere else uh, easily. So things went along like this for a long time and hit a, hit a little bit of a spot really not any bit near the spots I've heard of. Uh, and that was largely because we just kept pushing. Added a couple of robots in there from Arvado, and we've had some in-kind donations, but not a whole lot. But uh, these two robots came from Arvado, and Sarah can speak to uh, that more if you're interested. But basically, I heard that this is number 11. And then recently, I'll show you number 12 rolling into that space there, and, and us looking at each other and going, where do we put that? Um, so things like this happen when your colleague leaves town. I think I you were. There for that. Oh, okay, maybe it's the other one. It yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I thought you said they were sending a water jet. This looks like a boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is Greg uh, from facilities pulling a, a water jet off of a ramp truck. Uh, there you were going on that one. So she was training on the water jet while these two giant things showed up from Greensboro. Uh, this is a, a CNC mill. Um, Awesome thing about shop bots is that you can put them in a wood shop as we have too, but the more awesome thing I think they think as a manufacturer is you can put them all in a box and somebody else can put them together. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt had this experience of being really lucky and so did I, um, that we had our shop bot show up and it was put together wrong and really in a way that was never gonna be fixed. And so we had Randy from ShopBot come over and hang out with us for three days while we put ours together. Well, Matt and he put it together actually. Um, I laughed because Susie Sam, she's so awesome for us, but on our website today, she has me, and, and the quotation by the, by the um, photo is, Brent checking the printer, right? <laughs> it's a 2,000-pound it's a planer that I've take, just taken out of the box, and we've had to spin it around in a forklift, but I'm checking the printer I like that. <laughs> so some days it was, you know, I mean, we were often doing things that if you waited for... Um, I wouldn't say safe because we always do things safe, but if you were waited for every step to every T to be crossed and an I to be dotted, then we'd still be waiting. So we just got things done. Yeah. Uh, one day I remember actually moving the planer. They set it in place, and then I realized, oh, I told them to put it backwards. So it was like 2,000 pounds has to just spin, you know? And that's when Sam's friend is in town, and he's the guy who does all the rigging for Navitat. And so he rolls in with all his straps and we turn the planer around. Without that, you know, it would have been a little bit more difficult. That day. That's him in the white shirt there. I forget his name even. Matt reconfigured some wonky things about the shop bot. Two big boxes that stick out in our tight, tight space that you could hit your leg on. Even painted them yellow to match their branding. Jackson helped out a lot. I don't know. I want to thank Anthony, the uh, electrician, uh, not our Anthony, because I definitely want to thank Tony, our electrician. Tony has been really essential in us moving from contractors we hired to really having things work some days. So um, that's been really essential. Um, wood shop coming online, dust extractor, Matt going this way somewhat. That's also Matt's gantry. Um, so without that, we don't get it done. And a lot of times the communications over there, it seemed like to me, they happen within a second and we all were still continually collectively working together to get it done. Um, I've heard talk and urgency 
to learn how to turn a wooden bowl. I suspect you'll see that in your near future as an advertisement of please come over and take this one hour class and hang out and make a, make something at the steam studio on the lays. We have four of them and quite, I mean, a fairly ample space for them, which is good. Um, and then we have a, a really beautiful water jet, which can cut all kinds of things. 12 inch stone, we, we hear it can. We've cut two inch walnut steel, one inch steel. Um, all of these things are really hard to do any other way than with the water jet. And there's a robot coming in. So you got everything all tidied up and then this thing shows up. <laughs> Like the first, before the first week of classes, I said, I looked at her and I said, uh, where was that? I was, the, you know that container that's down at Riverside? I said, yeah. I said, that was in there. So the whole time I'd been driving by this thing, didn't know what was coming. So we have parts for a 12th one if you need to make one. And several Brad Paisley CDs. Oh, yeah. And we do have free Brad Paisley CDs and an, a country uh, music all-star that has Dolly Parton and Waylon Jennings on it because they came from Arvado. So they were essentially to put CDs in boxes. So we have three cases. And they're going faster than you would think. That's all I got to say on that one. <laughs> faster than you would imagine. Uh, I, watched, I did watch a guy walk out with four yesterday. I was like, well, that's fine. We want to get rid of them. So he's, gonna, you know, he's got next year's Christmas figured out. So well, there's the shop bot. When you put it together, it looks like that. And then this is coming into what's the most, one of the most exciting spaces of this. Um, shop to me and to Sarah and I is that we know that people walk into this giant space right here now still there's actually a yellow line here now put your safety goggles on and everything these tables are in the other room but when they walk into this space they go well, what are you going to do over there can't you put it over there all this is to be reconfigured <laughs> for however we want to use it smartly right there not right here all most everything is on wheels that we can put on wheels so we can move it around change the shape of the shop so I, if anyone, who was there for the ribbon cutting? Anybody there for the ribbon cutting? So a bunch of you were, thanks for coming. And then, um, so we can, re, you know, we even had about 150 people in here, I think at one point. So we can host whatever open house, any sort of lecture. And the idea is actually, there's actually a public interface right here that is now our temporary uh, computer lab. And once we finish up the mezzanine, which is up here, we'll be able to do that public programming right there, right? Which is really, a lot of what we're doing is about that we're not sitting on our main campus. The idea is this, that we're not sitting on our main campus. And the idea is that our students actually can have pre-professional or even professional experiences quickly and faster than they could on our campus by intersecting who might be in the building, i.e. designers. It's already happening. Uh, it was happening before we were open, about four months before we were opening. Uh, and then also the River Arts District. Believe it or not, that's at the gateway of the River Arts District. I told the city that recently, and they kind of chuckled, and I said, look at the map. You know, it goes all the way up to here. So we really are sitting there right at the very beginning of it, uh, when you turn the corner there. A lot of things, uh, our, our joke at Steam Studio is that every, we could, we could make that. It would mean, when would we make that, is the next question. Um, but made all the tables for the computer lab that when the mezzanine's built out, which is coming, I'm telling you, it's coming. Just keep dreaming about that part. And you can come in and walk up the steps, have a quiet time to design something, and then walk downstairs and make it. Um, Sarah designed this conference table in our conference room that's really an office on the plan because it's too small to be a conference room. Had 19 people in there yesterday. It's a little tight. Um, and then from the scissor lift, looking over. So that reconfigurable area is in here. And then here's where the mezzanine is going to go. This will be, someday this will be maybe where a 3D printer might live. Right now it's a human environment, us. <laughs> and we don't really want that in there. And there's a conference room there that's now blue because Sarah wanted all these walls painted blue. Got that done. Um, and then what's awesome about this, if you're interested in metal, metal uh, fabrication, is one, you've got a water jet here. Two, you have everything that would be in a regular metal shop right here, drill press, uh, bandsaw. Uh, and then you have this very ancient overhead mill and then a CNC mill. So you've got manual dexterity and CNC, I wouldn't say dexterity, the technology. And then you've got a manual lathe and a CNC lathe. So there's basically the two machines driven by a human and driven by a computer engine. 
uh, sitting side by side. That's Sarah's design. Hats off to Sarah for that. Because I, you know, I don't know how many times that we've given tours that I've commented yeah. on that. Uh, I think I have a dream of actually experiencing both someday. That's what it is. Uh, good luck. Um, and we do have one of these guys that looks like a little rocket ship that, or a little spaceship that landed. A uh, universal laser system. And it can do everything, mostly, that the water jet can't do. So, and I'm learning a lot about that. Sarah learned tons about that yesterday, and it was awesome to watch her from afar and then come back and get a report. Um, so we're about 120, let's see, 1227. What have we covered? Can we build this table at the steam studio? It happened. Uh, each one of those, do you remember how long these take? Uh, about a little over three hours. So each one of these takes three hours, and if you were to do this manually, could you even do it? You'd have to have a bag drill. Yep. Yeah. But it wouldn't be nearly as precise. And it would take how many hours, do you think? A lot longer. So those, those holes were cut uh, with the water jet. They're one inch in diameter, and that's one inch thick steel plate. It's four feet by, by one foot. So the crazy thing that I can always tell people about the water jet is, one, I don't know how to use it. I'm getting closer every day. Um, but it takes your regular water pressure and it pushes up to 50,000 pounds PSI and then shoot, shoots that and a piece of sand, basically garnet, through the material, right? And it goes into, that's why it's in a big tank, because you have to have to some, something to displace all that energy. And the, the awesome thing about the water jet, I think, having made things in a, a considerably more toxic time in my life, paints and all kinds of things, uh, is that it's environmentally, or, yeah, in that environment in there, there's no fume, anything like that. And the waste is essentially the garnet, mm -hmm. right? Just a question. Um, just looking at the table. Are you guys, you going to have like a welding area? That is, the that, welding is the, you're, that is sitting in the welding oh, area, oh, yeah. Yes. I don't think I have a very good picture of the welding area. Yes, it was a mess at the time. That's why I don't have a very good picture. It looks really good now. <laughs> um, and then we have lots of hand tools if you need hand tools. That's my dream heart down there. So this is kind of like I, every once in a while. At Owen, it's like you have to chase around and you realize, oh, it's gone, yeah. So we're trying to keep, we're trying over there to develop a culture of understanding that when people walk in the door that we built this great thing and they're there to help us keep it a great thing, right? And it's, it's getting there. Students are really responsive to it. Um, thus far, of course, we've what, been open a week and a half uh, or something like that this semester. But thus far, it it's just seems like something they really want to. And so we're developing a culture of ownership faculty, staff, student at STEAM. Uh, so I'm going to get to the encouraging part about your intersection there. Place where if you needed a, a little bit quieter place, you probably had to put on your headphones because it's right out there with everything else. Um, the lathe. Owners dressed up the building for us and were very generous to us as a donor, um, essentially in giving us what is a, a, a considerably cheaper rate than you'll get if you go there and try to get a lease right now, I can tell you that. Um, because I'll be keeping my studio in Grovewood Galleries because I can't afford to be in this space. <laughs> so um, that's what it looks like. I bet you haven't missed it. And then if you go between the buildings, there's a, uh, there's a, so at one point when the card readers are working, which is supposed to be Friday at five, okay, if I can help us out on that one, there's a main entrance of the building right here. And then we have a, a human door right here and two garage doors. This will li likely be locked. Uh, and you'll have to come into the hallway and access through the card reader there. And um, another thing you get to handle while you don't have card readers is who comes into the building. So we're in suite 140. Told you where that was. We had an awesome ribbon cutting. And um, really appreciate all the number of people that showed up for that. And um, that's really, you know, a lot of what I could say about that. It was, a again, I hope people were reminded by this, at least by this image and what was said at the podium, is that this place was built primarily for the students and then everyone else that comes after that. Uh, because you can imagine building a space like this, who shows up at your door? Who shows up? Well, hopefully the obvious faculty, right? And the other obvious welcome staff, right? We want those people. Who else shows up? Really? So somebody that has a job doing something else that really just wants to use our water jet. They don't care to be nice to us when they come in the door sometimes. <laughs> so, so, so we've got that balance that we're work, working out. And once we get the folks in there and really get the place uh, 
moving, then we'll have that really, you know, you'll walk in and you'll feel what is going on there. It, and right now it's kind of in this space where it's, it's hard to know that, right? So I'll put up this last slide because um, I'm going to check my notes and see what I left out. Because I had this whole structure here and I went to a different structure. Think of the questions you have right now. That's a good thing to think of. The card right here, what, is that a separate card? No, it's going to be your one card. Okay. Yeah. And so what we'll do is basically just like any other place on campus where you have access with your one card, you know, if Brandy's come over and she took that, you know, two day class with Graham um, turning bowls and her and Susan did it together. And then they roll in there on the Saturday because there's two of them, then they're fine to go. You know, this is what we envision. Can you do that now? No. <laughs> but, but, you know, we're, that's what we really envision. Towards, that's towards the end. That's the end goal. Things that you have, uh, I know, working in your research, that's where we would want you to be able to come in with at least one other person and have an intersection with seam. And the two, thing, the two people is about the obvious thing um, for safety. And even at this point, two's not enough sometimes. Because what if the two don't know the technology, then you need the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth, you know, the twelfth. Um, so it's, it goes layers deep, and so we have a way that we're going to use the access is basically, they'll be the card reader. There's also another access of training. And so you make an agreement in the contract, and on the back side of that, you've been checked off certain things, right? I don't foresee, you can tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> I don't foresee a gym membership, public interface. I don't see that. It's just not really congruent with uh, an education, educational experience at this point for this university. It might be for others. I mean, MIT, I'm sure, has one because it makes a lot of money, I bet. huh? Uh, but they have two football fields of making space. So um, what else? What other questions do you have? I'm, I said off campus, back of the building, where, when, why? This semester. This semester, I want to tell you a little bit about this semester. This semester we're calling the prototype semester because we're prototyping the semester. Not the things in the semester, but the semester. <laughs> because basically, uh, we've, got, we've got a little bit of a Sculpture 1 inter intersection. We have a little bit of a Sculpture 2 intersection. We have senior design uh, in engineering, JM485 class, uh, which is our seniors. And are juniors in there or not? Juniors not, but likely. I bet I see some juniors, because they'll, they'll you know, figure it out, and they'll need something done over the two. Um, and then we have an Arch 310 course I'm teaching with the UNC Asheville students and middle schoolers from Asheville Middle. And we're going to be doing who knows what yet. Uh, but that's an awesome group because I don't think I have an engineer or an art major in the whole group. No, I do have one art major, one of my sculpture students. Um, what did I leave out? I'm looking at the sketch. And that SAE. So we have an electric, uh, electric car group that is... Um, at first, I was going, wait a minute, this is another thing to put in here. They can come in anytime they want. It's an awesome group of people, and can you help me do that? And they're ready to go. So it's been a really an awesome thing to have in there. And they're looking, they're recruiting. They actually, I heard yesterday they've had some success recruiting other students in, so that's good. And story there is what you don't know that you're going to handle in a space like this, because it is a public place, remind our students, like, hey, we're not on campus. So when the, car, when the door's locked and the card reader's active, someone's going to come to the door and go, you know, through the window and want to come in. I said, and you're going to be the first frontline ambassador for UNC Asheville for the STEAM studio. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to be irritated first that you have to be pulled away from your work. Try to get over that one really quick and meet this person with a smile. Bring them in, find out what it is they want, you know, or why they're there. So... This happened to me on MLK Day. It was a quiet place I could find in the conference room. All the lights were out. I had five interruptions in the total day. The fifth one, when I thought I was going to lose my mind, because I didn't want to open the door again, I stood up, walked around, and I just like, in the time I walked around the, the wall, I lit myself up and met the person just as I told my students they should meet them. Who did I meet? I met the largest donor to the engineering department, who I don't know, and his, <laughs> and his wonderful wife, who's a woodworker. So that was a good, it was a good thing. So what we're having over there are totally different experiences that we were having walking around campus. And that's what we're really excited about, where people can experience our, our students in that, in that way. What else do we have? We had that, we had that. Anybody got 80 grand and need that for a mezzanine? I wanna, don't want to let you not know the amount if you happen to be that person. Um, of when this will be open 
faculty Well, so right now, if faculty and staff, because it is now, but if right now, if, if, if someone had a project, right, and uh, I emailed Sarah and I said, I have a project and it's to cut a mold on some machine and then to cast glass into it, right? Um, either there's a level of I do understand the technologies or I don't. So all that would just have to be assessed. The problem right now is that we still have our same duties we always had before this beautiful thing came online. Don't worry. It's going to get better. We just keep telling ourselves that. And we know it will. So basically it's to work out the kinks. So some of those are coming in now and we're saying, can you wait till this period? Can you wait till this period? So really that's kind of where we are. And if you can just bear with us on that, understanding that right now our biggest challenge, because I had down challenges, but I didn't want to start with the first. Uh, our biggest challenge is staffing, right? So right now we're staffing the place with Sarah and myself, with Shanna, who's a student worker, and then a really small engineering uh, slot for a tech, and then other students. That's it, right? That's it. So we don't really have the ability to staff it in a way to where you could come in. Ideally, we'd have a staff position that would be the first line uh, of offense for you as a, as a faculty or a staff that has a project. And then they sort through that. They go to this team or they go to that team, right? And that's just going to have to grow. It's not we just something we can't roll in. We could roll in if we told all the students they could stop taking their engineering classes and stop taking their art classes. <laughs> and we'd be good to go. You know? If there were no grades being given by anybody else, then we'd be fine. But sometimes that is the impediment. There's just not enough of us right now. And it's not a bad thing. It's just this thing we keep just relaxing and opening to the possibilities. <laughs> that's really what we do. Um, so guess when we ask for an operating budget? at the wrong time <laughs> so there's that slight thing slight blip too we'll take care of that too sometimes too soon there's the public inter interface the meet and greet which is really an active role some days over there it's like what did we get done today well 20 people came through got that one person this one person they could be a connection for this and then um and then the bridge to the partners in the community it's just a lot of work you know and so it's just a basically just a slow down and realize that it's going to be a lot of work and not get in and realize that we've got a 10 year lease. What are we going to have at the end of 10 years that we're really going to have something awesome. We'll have the problem of figuring out where to put it. We'll figure that out too. Don't worry about that. Um, those are the challenges and access and safety are the, that's the biggest challenge, you know, any other challenges that you guys can speak of? So basically I'm hearing that we, we should, necessarily just do a pop-in or oh no a pop-in's fine. Pop fine yeah i hope you didn't hear that okay and especially if you're of the home crew yeah crew. yeah okay. but are there any events coming up like uh, open house or something on the calendar is a date but it's not a date so it's in the spring i'll say it is <laughs> that we're to have an open house and that was the concept last semester so we'd have but what i would want you to do is not wait until then just come over. And Sarah's there most days from 11 to 7, unless she's at the brown bag talk with me today. <laughs> and then we've got two students over there, actually three or four students at this time. Um, so come on over. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and really, that's the best thing. Because sometimes people keep asking me, they ask me, like, literally, well, what is it? I'm like, it's, it's over there. And, I, and we've invited everyone to come. Please come. It's, it's not the, the public interface part, what I'm talking about now. It's just basically, it could be a really awesome potential partner walking in the door. It could be, you know, your largest distraction ever as a person you never want to come back. So it could, it's this whole, you know, spectrum of things that could happen in that. Uh, and we just need, a, you know, people to do that too. So sometimes we could be working on a project with you, more excited than we've ever been about STEAM because I saw her yesterday on this thing where she was sorting through basically the process of making this thing on the laser. And one advancement was like, cutting the thing this way or cutting the thing this way and it went from 11 minutes to three minutes so just knowing that and then being in that excited mo moment where we're sharing like oh look and i've got this all written down and somebody else can do it again and replicate it then we've got a you know a visitor so it's like just just basically not enough bodies so if you came over what we've been encouraging people to do come over identify yourself as someone who could volunteer time right now that's a really big one get trained on something or some things 
and, and be on the schedule. Because that's the easiest and best way that we see making that happen right now. Uh, it could be that, I mean, well, it's likely to be. I'm not going to be the one that's the most proficient in many of these things. Sarah is going to be well ahead of me on a lot of things. And then I can walk into the woodshop and be well ahead on her. But, but we need these other people, you know. And ideally, those people are our faculty and staff and our students. So, you know, don't be discouraged to come. It's, it's not really, I don't want to paint the picture that it's like, oh, I wish these people would just go away. That's not it at all, actually. I just want to add a logistic note to that, too, is that if you do come by, that door that's between the garage bays, once the car readers are active, um, all the doors will be normally locked. And we'll add people to the, um, the car reader registry once uh, they've just gone through the little safety orientation. Um, so once we have that paperwork done. So you come to the door with the window and, and arm waiting. Either that, either that or... Orientations will be, will be set up at some point. I guess there'll be a schedule for those. Right now we're doing it for as classes meet and um, on an individual basis as people come in. Um, so we're, we don't have a, a system in place yet. Okay. Yeah, and I think ideally we would have a schedule. Send it out to everybody and go... Hey, this is when you can come for this. And the idea is that we will actually have a list of things throughout the course of the semester. Mm -hmm. And you can always make an appointment. Yeah, an email. I'm coming. You're going to be there. That's you know. <coughs> surely, can you come on Thursday instead of Tuesday? You know, and you might be coming. Like your time to get there might be during the time when we know we have a class in there. So, come 15 minutes before 20 minutes. You foresee anything with the robots? I, obviously, they can do whatever. So, any ideas? <laughs> So a lot of ideas. Um, the the five-axis arm will likely be reserved for use for our robots class. Um, that's it has a lab component yeah. that, that uh, programs those types of robots. The Cartesian coordinate one though is kind of um, up for uh, a test platform for uh, any project ideas. Big three D printer, big router, whatever. I said icing cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. One, one of the Sculpture 2 students had the idea of it being a, a large format, the little like machines that you put a coin in and it picks Pick up, up a stuffed animal. Oh, yeah. stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to raise money. Yeah. <laughs> There's that too. I forgot about that aspect of, uh, yeah. So we're always thinking about that too over there. You can imagine there's a fairly large uh, expendables budget. Sandpaper, tooling, yeah. things like that. What other questions do you have? You have questions for folks that didn't get pushed to the front, <laughs> or they did get pushed to the front row at least. <laughs> Rebecca, do you have anything to add? No, I think you know you did a great job. It's wonderful to see everybody here interested and participating. Yeah, particularly if you have a project and you know, like in the fall, in the summer that you could make some time to make the connection to a curriculum, a curricular effort, then yeah, give us enough lead time on that. And right now it's basically enough lead time is to let us know that you need it really in the summer, the fall, or the following year. And then that doesn't mean if I want to learn how to turn bowls, that might happen sooner than that. But um, right now we're focused on the, basically what we can have our classes do in there. It's not to say that, I mean, Tony, for instance, the electrician, uh, if, if he didn't have something come up where he's going up to be with his mom, then I know basically he'd be in there a lot more often, you know. So there are staff that, and then Dan in mm -hmm. facilities just sent us an email. Mm -hmm. I know he wants to be on, on a list of folks that can get in there and volunteer, you know, exchange volunteer time for that. I mean, what we're finding, too, is that who has a lot of volunteer time, right? But I'm curious about how do you handle, let's say someone's working on a project, do, and, but they're not finished. Do they just take it with them, or is there a place for How big is that project? <laughs> <laughs> so in the wood shop, I mean, I know this, this is basically where the students put their work. It's like the first thing we can think of, and Owen's like, oh, they put it here, and then they have to move there, and then they have to move there, and then they have to move, you know, basically. So we, we've got in some places that in the wood shop where they're small, and then we've got other places that this would be an awesome place for a volunteer to show up, is that we have this big, long working uh, space that Sarah designed in the, the reconfigurable part and then we're going to build bins that go underneath there. So there are places to tuck away things, big projects. Um, obviously if you build it big enough then we're going to you know, convince you it should probably come apart. 
not not be welded together. So, I mean, you have an idea on that. It's basically, it's. Yeah, well, so, so the the workbenches that we were making, um, those are intended to be a, a a thing that the students can check out for the semester. So it's something that they can store. That would be their storage space. Um, so that's something for the engineering senior design teams and um, and for the advanced sculpture students to be able to to be like this is mine um, and it's tucked away and we can move it out of the way if we need to. Um, I actually covered all that, not quite in that order. <laughs> you know, the how is the biggest thing. I put down who, what, when, why, where, and then challenges. And then as I was doing all that, I was like, really, it's the how that's been the most exciting thing. And it's really in, in deference to the crew that's sitting here on the front row and the people that aren't here um, and that have really stuck with us throughout this. It's, and someone asked me, said, well, we could get the STEAM committee to meet on that, right? And I looked at him and I said, what steam committee mm -hmm. so we have successfully <laughs> launched this cut the ribbon on it and there's not a committee you know there's a feat in academia right <laughs> <laughs> oh no now i know which email i'm getting yeah yeah what committee you're going to be on skidmore so um well you have any other questions we got 12 minutes or or not so well, what in the interim, with that mezzanine up there not being used, of course it's safety because they need guardrails. But if there was a stairway for, to bring up like a box or storage, what about that? Yeah, that got nixed. Yeah, we thought of that and already. If we put the stairway in now, that would eat into our temporary computer lab. It basically the stairway goes down the middle of the computer lab now. Oh, it's not right on the outside, or is that just the drawing? It is. Okay. No, it's um, yeah, but I'll show you on that. Yeah. It would take out the entire T of the makeshift computer lab. So in there, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, because that's. That's not there. Oh, that's the stairway comes right here, uh, and then there's a, a walkway. A cat a catwalk goes across that way into the looks down into both spaces. You know, I think we'll I think we'll realize that mezzanine fairly quick because what I'm finding is that it's really difficult. You can't you essentially can't teach very well here. You could do it really early because no one comes in really early. Um, but this is in the same room that there's a something really loud over here going on. Unless you could do it with headphones and they could, I could speak through a microphone and you could speak through a microphone into the headphones. But we'll likely have the a mezzanine realized before that happens. And, the, uh, and we've just been really discouraged, like even told never to do that, put anything up there. There are some extra uh, exhaust pipes up there and things, but. You know, and, the, and I, I mentioned something about the public programming. Ideally, too, we'll realize this public interface that will be similar to a brown bag is that we'll have a regular occurring event there. And then that where, that's where we come over, see what's going on. And those regular occurring events will be places to where our students can either be the presenter or our students can uh, experience a presenter that will be a direct relationship to their curriculum and particularly to whatever they might be prototyping. You know, whatever, and it could be that they're presenting on a project that they're working on with the industrial, the, the, the partner in the, public in this space that would be ideal you know and that's coming like that's be one of the first things we do in there uh, we also have some hopes right now and they're looking really well uh, um, of having a, a visiting maker in there so we'd have basically a, a cadre of folks that would come through w only one thing they have to be really nice and then we have to help decide that because we have to live with them you know so it's just been it's been a amazing time over there and it really has been because we've been listening to each other slowing down it's easy to slow down when construction just stops well they got another job huh okay um any other questions who's coming by today i have class in at 120. i don't know what sarah's doing today but do be there till seven it's thursday and thursday night is yeah, somebody will be there till 10 tonight. So we do have a schedule, and at some point, I put up the website. I don't have a hyperlink, but at some point, we'll have the schedule on the, on the website. And if you look at our website, it's only not developed, not because of our awesome uh, marketing team. It's because the team that all has all those other things to do has to do the website, too. So you guys know the story, right? So I appreciate you coming. And uh, if you have any other questions offline, send us an email. It's always easy to get a hold of one of us at some point even soon.
I heard, but I'm not ready to release it yet because I don't know if I'm on that list. There's going to even be an email. The email is there. Mm -hmm. We haven't sent it out yet, right? Or did we send it out? Mm. <laughs> we, all, we all like flinched when Susan said that the other day. No! no. But yeah, so you know, all, we know, you, know, you know where to find us all, though. So it's easy to do right now. So please come and uh, please think about how you can see your students there and particularly your own research. Uh, maybe even your own fun and enjoyment and not research, but peace. So there you go.